Today, we are reacting to how EA killed the Sims franchise, the sad state of the Sims 4 by Bull technology. I will link to the original video and the creator in the bio. Please subscribe. I feel like there's a lot of these kinds of videos on the internet, including like many that I've made myself. So I think it'll be an interesting one. The first Sims game, simply titled The Sims, was published in 2000. Over the next few years, The Sims would get a total of seven feature-filled expansion packs until 2004. I just want to say for those who didn't play The Sims back in 2000 or weren't alive then or wasn't a gamer then, the concept of having DLC was totally like it didn't exist. The concept of an expansion pack genuinely didn't exist back then. I don't believe The Sims was the first game to ever have expansions or DLC, but it was one of the first. Not only was it one of the first, it had seven, which is absolutely bizarre when you think back then like the concept concept of DLC didn't really exist. The Sims invented cash grabby DLC. <laughs> it's their fault. Up to now, the consensus on all three mainline Sims games was pretty much the same. They were all pretty good, with The Sims, Sims 2, and Sims 3 getting 92, 90, and 86 Metacritic scores respectively. But The Sims 4 saw a sharp decrease to only a 70 Metacritic score. I always get a lot of people say to me like, Satch, why do you hate on The Sims 4? It's so funny to me because like a lot of those people I know haven't played any previous Sims games and I mean it makes sense The Sims 4 was released about nine years ago now the majority of people who have ever played The Sims have only ever played The Sims 4 people who didn't start on The Sims 4 you know we have experience of The Sims 1 or The Sims busting out or The Herbs The Sims 2 My Sims The Sims 3 The Sims Medieval The Sims Castaway Stories The Sims Gen genuinely used to be amazing and I think you know factually well not well it's still opinions but I just feel like this justifies what I say when I say The Sims 4 is the worst Sims game ever. Also I do feel bad for people who have only ever played The Sims 4 because it's like this weird trap where yeah technically you could go back and play The Sims 3 but firstly EA never do sales on The Sims 3 really anymore so The Sims 3 is ridiculously expensive and secondly it is ugly and I understand why people want to play The Sims 4 because it's more pretty. I think if people could get past the graphical barrier and they could get past the aesthetics, I genuinely think that they would enjoy The Sims 3 and the packs that are offered a lot more. But I also think this score is interesting because The Sims 4 is the best selling Sims game ever and the most profitable one ever. <laughs> Yet it's the worst one ever. This is why EA will never stop because now they know they can get away with releasing a shit game. On Steam of The Sims 4 are littered with reviews such as this. DLC simulator. Record, <laughs> That's what I always ways. say. I always say The Sims 4 is an aesthetic DLC simulator, which is true. It's literally very aesthetic and beautiful, but it is just a DLC simulator. Well, today I'm going to lay out three major issues with The Sims 4 and how these three issues are tarnishing The Sims brand. These issues are a lack of features, outdatedness of the game, and DLC. So let's begin with a lack of features. Uh, for starters, The Sims 4 released in 2004 14, with many features lacking that had been in games prior, most notably swimming pools, cars, an open world, half walls and curved walls, terrain editing, and a modicum of other features. Now, yes, some features such as half walls, pools, and terrain editing have been added, but by and large, many features are still missing. One of the things that like, I genuinely find bizarre, just to add to this as well, in terms of the lack of features, EA often do update The Sims 4 with brand new features. You know, more than recently, we got the infants update. But the issue I find whenever they, even like when they do give us the features that were previously missing, they upsell it as if it's this big, incredible free update. What it actually is in reality, for example, with the infants, it's not a free update. It's an excuse to try and make you purchase the Growing Together pack because the majority of infant gameplay is hidden behind that pack. Also, it's stuff that literally should have existed nine years ago. I'm looking at my 
my window because there's a hot builder outside. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like I remember when they added dishwashers as a new update and I think she was Rachel Franklin, the producer or something of The Sims for a time and was bigging it up like, wow, we're getting this incredible update and it was bloody dishwashers. <laughs> also, sometimes when The Sims 4 does add features that should have been in the base game, there have been many occasions where they just directly put them in packs. Like when hot tubs first came out, they came out in a special hot tub pack and you had to get the hot tub stuff pack in order to actually have hot tubs in the game. Whereas in previous Sims games, like they weren't tied to a specific pack, which is just crazy. I definitely think there's this strong gaslighting culture with The Sims 4 where it's like telling you to shut up and be grateful because we've given you this amazing free update. Like it's not an amazing free update. It's something that should have existed nine years ago. What they should be doing is saying, I'm really sorry this wasn't in the base game. The Sims 3 had a full open world where you could adventure to your heart's desire, but not in The Sims 4. And the complete lack of vehicles is puzzling for a life simulator. Even expansion packs seem dumbed down on features. The Sims 3 featured an expansion pack titled Pets, which featured cats, dogs, horses, and other small animals that you could have as pets. The Sims 4 came out with an expansion pack titled Cats and Dogs, which eliminated horses and small animals for $39.99. And if you wanted just horses, well, that'll be another $39.99. This is why I honestly say The Sims 4 is like, I'm sorry, I keep looking out the window, I need to stop. <laughs> this is why I always say The Sims 4 is an aesthetic DLC simulator, because I see a lot of the cultish EA fanboys often say, oh, but you know, The Sims 4 Horse Ranch, it has a pretty world, it has tons of build stuff, it has tons of create a sim clothing items. But these things are not really features that you could put with a specific pack, because these could be included in any pack. They're not really unique. Also, in The Sims 3, you know, worlds were basically free. You could create your own world. There are thousands upon thousands of free worlds to download, each with, you know, up to 100 lots or something. As well as that, you know, in Build Mode, we had the create style tools, so you could basically create any texture for any single object in Build Mode. So you basically had an unlimited amount of build objects just in the base game alone. That's why I never ever listen to people when they say, oh, but the packs have a nice new world. Like EA basically locked features behind packs which were previously free and open in The Sims 2 and 3. That is why nobody can ever gaslight me into thinking that all cats and dogs and horse routes should be separate. Absolutely no way. It just feels like with every successive Sims game, the game has improved and added features. And while yes, there are new features in The Sims 4, there are also quite a lot of missing features. It's certainly a step backward. It's funny though, because people always say like, oh, The Sims 4 has the best build mode, it has the best create sim mode, blah, blah, blah. It has the prettiest UI. These are things that you would expect for any video game progressing forward. It's just natural that a video game that's released after the previous one will be prettier. It will have more intuitive UI. It will have more intuitive tools. That's just like a very basic thing. Because even though people say The Sims 4 build mode is the best build mode, actually, it's literally no different to The Sims 2 and 3 built mode. The exact same tools are there. In fact, there were even more built tools technically in The Sims 3. It's just in The Sims 4, they did it in a way that makes it quicker and easier to understand for people who are not pros. But it's not necessarily more advanced building. It's basically just the same, but presented a lot more nicely, which is why very unpopular opinion, I know, but I don't think The Sims 4 build mode specifically was a step forward. I think it was just more of a tiptoe forward, if that makes sense. So let's now talk about the game's outdatedness. The Sims 4 was released in September of 2014. At the time of making this video, it is August of 2023, about a year before The Sims 3 can celebrate its 10th birthday, and EA is still continuing to release expansion packs for The Sims 4. The crazy thing is, though, to put it in even more perspective, the reason why basically EA moved on from The Sims 3 to The Sims 4 is because The Sims 3 was kind of drying up. Even though it's a really great game, people saw buying the packs. They got all of the packs that they wanted, seasons, generations, whatever. People stopped buying the packs because they were coming out with weird stuff like Into the Future because they ran out of ideas. And then of course EA's response to that is to say, well, people will only buy packs like seasons or packs like generations. So what we need to do is we need to make The Sims 4 so we can then sell them seasons and generations a second time over. It's like the eternal trap of The Sims where you're basically buying the same thing over and over again. 
And this is why I'm genuinely really surprised that we don't currently have The Sims 5 now. Every Simmer basically already owns the most popular packs like Seasons or Dine Out now. So why are they still continuing to upsell brand new packs for the game? Why don't they just move on to The Sims 5? Is it because Sims 4 packs are still currently selling? Like if we look at the last two packs growing together in Horse Ranch, as far as I'm aware, what I heard was that growing together was apparently the most popular pack ever for The Sims 4 in terms of like fastest sales, which is literally insane to me. I don't know if that's true, but I heard it's true. And it's this bizarre thing where like The Sims 4 is so out of date, yet it continues to get so many sales, which is obviously why they're not moving on yet. It's just crazy to me. Like it's the worst reviewed and objectively the worst Sims game, yet it's the best selling one and the longest running one. Absolutely crazy. For some perspective, there was only a five year gap between The Sims 3 and The Sims 4, a four year gap between The Sims 2 and The Sims 3, and yet again, four years between the original Sims game and The Sims 2. Not just a Sims issue, but I think in general, video games now, they don't just make a new game every five years or so, as I used to do in the past. The majority of video game developers out there are moving more towards a model where you create this giant big canvas game full of endless possibilities and then upsell DLC for years and years and years to come. It seems to be the new trend with video games in general general like I wouldn't blame EA and The Sims 4 specifically for this because it's just a general consensus that DLC is much easier to create than a brand new game is to create and it also ends up selling a lot more money because you can churn out so much of it so that's why I think it's become the new trend to keep video games going on and on and on perpetually without ever releasing a sequel. I think it's just a generic video gaming industry issue not a Sims 4 issue. The biggest issue issue with The Sims 4, and that is expansion packs and DLC. Previous Sims games featured purchasable DLC, much like The Sims 4, but recently it's gotten completely out of hand. Let's take stock. The first expansion pack to this- Here we go. <laughs> I wonder how long this section of the video is gonna be. <laughs> We're gonna be here for 10 minutes going through all of the packs. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna skip ahead a bit because, you know, we know what's coming, don't we really? I mean, putting it into perspective, okay, this many expansion packs, that's- 559.86 so basically almost 560. $560 and the funny thing is like genuinely you most definitely couldn't get any more than like 30 hours maximum gameplay out of all of these combined. I mean I personally find that I can get through a Sims 4 pack within about two hours. So roughly, probably, you know, about 30 hours for all of these. And despite costing over 500 US dollars just for the expansion packs alone, it doesn't even come close to like 50 hours of gameplay. And you know, I play indie games with like over 100 hours of gameplay. It's honestly insane. But wait, there's more. The Sims are we moving on to game packs now? Smaller and retail for $19.99 and there are 12 game packs total. <laughs> Did you think I was done? Nope. We all know how many packs there are. I don't want to relive the trauma. Oh, wow. I didn't realize though there was that many kits. Bloody hell. <laughs> Let's do a little quick math. There are 14 expansion packs times $39.99 plus 12 game packs times $19.99 plus 18 stuff packs times $9.99 and finally add 23 times $4.99 for the total number of kits. This brings the total price for all Sims DLC at MSRP to $1,094 dollars and 33 Sense. It's just crazy to me. Like the worst thing is, okay, I know you all do this, so don't lie to me. You have an idea, something you want to do in The Sims, a certain way you want to play the game and you feel inspired and you're like, oh my God, I want to do this in The Sims. So you start up The Sims, you create a household in Cass. You're like, yes, I'm going to do this gameplay thing that I really want to do. And then you get about five, 10 minutes into the game and you realize actually this is really, really difficult to set up and like, I can't deal with it. It's getting a bit boring and mundane so you switch the game off after like 10 minutes in gameplay max and then you don't touch the game again for another three months and then you go back to it and you just rinse and repeat this cycle. It's this weird cycle where I think players have a genuinely good way that they want to play the game or a good idea or a good thing to do but when it actually comes down to it it's like ridiculously difficult so you just give up. It's like my favorite gameplay thing in The Sims 4 is retail and I'll go into the game and I will spend about an hour in cast. I'll spend about an 
hour building a nice house and then 10 minutes into gameplay i think oh my god i can't set up a retail store in this game like it is so difficult even if i do set it up it's just gonna bug and glitch out so there's just no point i think that's one of the main reasons to why so many simmers are more than happy to buy packs knowing that they're crap because it's like they love the idea of the sims 4 but they don't love the sims 4 that's genuinely how i think a lot of simmers work they love the idea of being able to do something in the sims which is why they buy packs in order to appease the idea of doing it but actually when it comes down to it they can't do what they want to do and they just end up dissatisfied but they end up buying another pack because they think it will give them satisfaction and maybe it does for about 10 minutes but then they get bored of it and they don't ever go back to it again and it's that weird addiction cycle which is why i honestly think ea get away with upselling a singular video game that's worth over one thousand dollars ea isn't trying to develop a great sims game they are attempting to milk loyal fans an aesthetic dlc simulator millions <laughs> of dollars on sims 4 dlc if ea wants to squeeze customers that's one matter but also trashing a game's reputation by turning it into a dlc simulator well that's borderline criminal if you ask me that's the thing that i genuinely don't understand about the way ea works i've heard people say that they're like the mcdonald's of video gaming publishers but the thing i find like genuinely crazy is that like the sims 4 has an extremely weirdly crazily loyal fan base where simmers will buy packs knowing that they're broken like i know so many simmers who own packs like die now and my wedding stories they know that these packs are horrifically awful they know that they don't work but they buy them anyway the sims 4 has an extremely weirdly loyal fan base and instead of appreciating that ea i do think they exploit that it is very clear that they don't care very much about the satisfaction of their player base because they know that the player base will purchase the packs even though they're not satisfied it's so crazy to me like genuinely crazy because you know what ea are currently doing with the sims 4 ea tried to do this with sim city and sim city fans said nope we are not having this so then they abandoned sim city the sim city franchise died a ea basically killed it off because the fans of sim city said no we're not having this simmers don't have this mindset of being like no i am not having this they just kind of put up with it and deal with it it's like um is it called stockholm syndrome <laughs> or like learned helplessness <laughs> some like weird psychological trauma it's like a toxic relationship i would like to briefly discuss ongoing rumors about the sims 5 allegedly ea is planning for the sims 5 to be completely free to play from day one and the game is likely to feature some sort of in-app marketplace now again this is mostly good speculation but it seems as if things by the way ea actually once posted a job listing i forgot what the role was for but i believe it was for specifically for a manager to manage like dlc and making money from the game and it said something in the job listing about like an in-game marketplace so it is basically kind of confirmed that we're getting an in-game marketplace in the sims 5 obviously they could change that but they actually took the job listing down very quickly after sim has spotted it i guess the most comparable game to that would probably be something like roblox right now when i honestly like don't think i'd be able to cope with an in-game marketplace i feel like it's potentially ea's way of capitalizing on free custom content because ea knows that cc creators and modders are doing a better job at making their game than ea themselves so it wouldn't surprise me if they try to find a way to actually monetize that directly themselves ea killed sim city with one poor game release fans flocked to other games in the genre one of the reasons though why i do think that hasn't happened with the sims 4 is because the sims 4 has basically been the only realistic life simulation game there are so many life simulation games out there like i don't know animal crossing but animal crossing is obviously not realistic paralives and life by you are the first two major life simulation games to really be cropping up i definitely think that life by you will be major competition for the sims 4 but I also think it's going to be really hard for them to break in because most simmers live, laugh, love the Sims 4 and they, you know, as I said before, simmers will stand up for the game and justify terrible packs like My Wedding Stories because it's like this weird cult right now. I think all like not just the Sims 4, but all of these cozy life sim games, it's like this weird cultish thing that's like everything must be cozy. Everything must be perfect. And if you attempt to criticize the game, 
game. You're an evil, horrible person. We all must just shut up and be grateful, which is what all the terminally online simmers say on Twitter. <laughs> shut up and be grateful. <laughs> but I am curious to see when games like Life by You do come out. Will the Sims community kind of split in half with the diehard Sims fans, the shut up and be grateful, <laughs> the shut up and be grateful simmers, or just stick with the Sims 4 in their little bubble, whereas all the other Sims might move on to other games like Life by You because they can see that potentially it's going to be a lot better. I think it's going to be an interesting one to see what exactly will happen when that comes out. My only hope now is that another developer can pick up the reins and develop a better game. And while The Sims' name might not live on forever, the lives of our Sims, the characters and stories they tell, will live on. Maybe in another game and through other characters, but they will. It's funny though, because it hasn't just happened with like people go from Sim City to City Skylines. The same thing happened with Roller Coaster Tycoon. Roller Coaster Tycoon had like this incredible name for itself. It was a well long established franchise, and, but when they released Roller Coaster Tycoon 4, it was such like a horrific game, and and fans of the series, long-term fans of the series were so disappointed and they were like, nah, I can't deal with this. So they moved on to Planet Coaster. I do think it will inevitably happen with The Sims. And I know this is a bit pessimistic, but I do think The Sims 5 is going to be a turning point. And I think a lot of Simmers at that point will definitely like give up on the game. Genuinely have this horrible fear that The Sims 5 is going to be horrendous and it is going to kill off The Sims and people will move on onto games like Paralives and Life by You at that stage, which is such a shame because I do have a lot of love for The Sims ever since The Sims 1. And it's such a shame that EA is basically killing it off slowly. But that's what EA does do. They kill off all of their video games. Thank you very much to Ball Technology for the very, very lovely video essay. Make sure to give him a follow. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.